So we have our basic necessities, apple, obviously, cinnamon sugar, flour, egg wash, and our syrup that we make ourselves. What's the syrup? So it is white sugar, a lot of butter, and water. And we just cook it until it all melts together. That sounds really good. <laughs> I'm always trying to up my game. So I came down to Hollenbaugh Brothers Farm and Market in Biglerville to learn how to make an apple dumpling. Where do we get these cool hats? Ah, uh, all right, I got one for you. All right, good. <laughs> got to keep my, my long, beautiful <laughs> hair out of this apple <laughs> mixture. How's that look? Looks fancy. Good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you ever wear a hat on a hat? No, this is the first time I'm seeing it, to be honest with you. Might want to try that out. Okay. <laughs> The truth is, I don't know a measuring cup from a mixing bowl. But I do know one thing, I look good in a hairnet. I'm Steve Ford, and I was born and raised right here in PA. I'm lucky enough to know a lot of the hidden treasures and tasty treats sprinkled all across our state. Cheers, cheers, cheers Eddie. Yes. But I don't know them all. So I figured it was time to hop in the car and take a road trip to see what I might be missing. Pennsylvania is all about apples, and Hollenbaugh Brothers grows and sells dozens of amazing varieties. This is gorgeous. Welcome to our family's farm. So it's the perfect place to visit in my quest to become Stevie Appleseed. My grandpa started our business uh, with his twin brother back in 1955. I find it very cool that your family has done this for generations. Yeah. Kind of wish that my family was <laughs> generational farmers. <laughs> This orchard is our pick your own orchard here at our oh, farm. Wow. So it was kind of designed to stay a little lower to the ground so that people could reach the trees and pick the apples off of them. Although there are some high ones up there that are Which is challenging. A, it's great for me because I get all the best apples up top. The I bet kids you can come reach through, them. Yep. but I get the good ones. <laughs> this is different than what I'm used to because the trees where I pick are much bigger than this. So the whole apple industry has changed a lot over the years. And on our farm, we've kind of moved to these style plantings. We call them high density orchards. They're designed to be closer together. The rows are closer together so you can fit more trees to an acre. Mm -hmm. And because there isn't as many branches and leafing and things like that, the quality of the apples you get is much higher. And when we're growing for what we call the fresh market, which is for people like you to buy in a grocery store or in our family's farm market, something like that, those yeah. are the things that we, that we care about and we want to have available. Can I pluck one? Of course. What kind of apple is this right here? These are Granny Smith. Let me make sure I like this. Have you ever picked an apple before? Do you know what you're doing? Why do you show me? <laughs> so it's pretty easy. You just want to grab it from the bottom and turn and gently pull. The idea is okay. not to take leaves or branches with you, just the apple. What about the little stem part? The little stem is okay. It may or may not come. Okay. Turn and pull. You can eat it. It's Granny Smith though. It's a little tart. That was good. So what is the best selling apple? Uh, for our farm, uh, we grow an apple called Nittany, which is probably our most popular apple. You can't get it anywhere else, really. So people difference? come from all over the place. Um, it's a cross between a York Imperial and a Golden Delicious. So okay. it's kind of a sweet tart apple, makes a great pie, great to pick up and just crunch into. Definitely worth a try. It's developed at Penn State, hence the name Nittany, okay. um, which also uh, lends itself to do well here in PA. Yeah. My goal in life is to make people who love Red Delicious apples try something else. Okay. Because there's so many better apples out there. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how many things you can make with apples. Apple dumplings, crisps, pies, yep, we made, cobbler. Yep, we do the cobbler, we do muffins. Caramel apples. Yeah, caramel apples. Ciders. Yep. What's um, your favorite? Apple dumpling or an apple pie. Nice. Clearly, there's a lot of different apples and a lot you can make with them. And in this case, it's the perfect apple dumpling. And then the syrup, you want to just cover do you ever just drink the syrup straight up? I mean, you could. Personally, I haven't tried it yet, but go right ahead. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Watch out. It's a sugar yeah. high. Yeah, there's about probably three quarts of sugar. This is delicious. <laughs> Making apple dumplings is my new favorite hobby. And I can tell you all the steps, but you're better off coming to the market and trying a fresh baked one for yourself. 
that's so nice and warm. It's like cinnamon, sugar, and sweet. I want to think it's still healthy. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell yourself that every yeah. bite. This is good for you. Yeah, it's amazing. This dumpling is incredible. But at Hollabaugh Brothers, you don't just eat apples. I heard you drink them too. All right, so we're making our apple cider donut milkshake, which you start with a base of vanilla ice cream. So you're just gonna scoop five or six scoops. But it turns out a milkshake on an apple farm is gonna have a twist. This is where it gets different because normally this would be your milk. Right. Apple cider, donut crumbles, and mix it up. And it's almost time to dig in. So grab a donut, apple cider donuts, pop it Do on top. I'm very excited. Oh, that was amazing. You know, it's so nice that your family's here and has been for generations, keeping up the traditional business of farming and entertaining everyone. The future is ice cream and donuts That's and right. apples. You gotta think outside the box, right? Yeah, you really are. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank cheers you very much. You. I can't cheers you. There's a problem here. Well, let's make another <laughs> shake then. You got it. One more cider shake later and I'm back on the road. But this time, I'm sticking around Biglerville. My friend Maggie, who's an apple expert, told me about another great market in a very unique round barn. Wow, that is one impressive barn. What year is this barn built? The barn was built in 1914. So I think back then they didn't have all the power tools they have now. Yeah. So the ingenuity and the handwork that went into building this is pretty amazing. How long is your family? So we're the second family that own it. We got it in 84. So what do you guys do here? Yeah, so we uh, obviously grow fruit. Uh, our biggest thing we do is grow apples. So mm -hmm. we're tree fruit growers. But we also have our own market inside the Round Barn as well. So we market a lot of our own products. We grow other things like apples, peaches, nectarines, plums, cherries, strawberries, all your small berries, stuff yeah. like that. People come here from all over the place to just check out the Round Barn itself. I hope they find some pretty good stuff downstairs too. And people get married here. Yes, yeah, so we do weddings. We got an outdoor chapel up on the hill. Um, they get married up there. We shut them down here and they had the reception downstairs. I want to get in here. Let's go see this place. Right, let's go check it out. Whoa, this is gigantic. What a cool space. All the way from downstairs, all the way to the top, about 60 feet high. So is this a silo in the middle? Yeah, you got a central silo in the middle. Kind of acts as like the hub of a wheel and holds everything together. It seems like a lot of this is all original wood too. Yeah, all the wood on this barn came from this farm. And I'd say about 99.5% of it's all original. We had to replace a few things that uh, have kind of wear, wear and tear. I have been driving past this barn my entire life. This is a landmark and I've never been inside. So thank you for having us today because this is absolutely beautiful. Maggie is a local apple expert and my go-to for all things apples in Adams County. Did you grow up nearby? I did. I grew up nearby. My father bought an orchard in 1976. And then all the families are working together to make business booming. Everybody is working together, especially in Adams County. It's a, it's a pretty close-knit agriculture community. And now we have all of these beautiful spaces that we can bring for weddings and farm tours. So we're working together to, to yeah. keep, it, keep it fun. Yeah. This is definitely a landmark that is worth the trip. This is very unique, even if you just get to see the outside. That's what we say too, just, just visit it, just check it out, and next thing you know, you're gonna wanna keep coming back. For it's sure. Pretty impressive. While this barn is unbelievable, it's time to go downstairs and check out this market and the incredible amount of apple products they sell. Because at the end of the day, I'm all about the food. We got a salad dressing made with apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I'd like some of that. So here's apple butter barbecue sauce. This one here, flavored with your spicy, your chipotle. I'll try that. Chipotle. This one here, caramel apple jam, just put it in, put it in your basket. All right. <laughs> I mean, I've shopped in circles, but not literally. So all these are locally sourced products as well, right? Locally sourced or made with our products. Caramel apple bar. Ooh, a baking mix. Can we try some of these? We can try some of this stuff, yeah. Let's just go open these up. Uh, I'm right ready. To it. I'm hungry. All right, we'll get the apple butter. I like to eat inside the grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking maybe we should try the apple butter first. Sure. Start with that. What's yours? Mmm. That's so good. No sugar added with spice. It's fresh. 
It's like refreshing in your mouth. It's got full apple flavor. Something yeah. different, something for them it's to try. It's got a little zing to it, like a little bit of that spice. A little bit nice. of spice, right? Just yeah. a little spice. Is it okay to eat a whole jar of apple butter at once? <laughs> I maybe try. I never tried it myself. <laughs> well, let's try some cheese. <laughs> All right. And this cheese has apple in it. Yeah, this is a apple cinnamon cheddar cheese. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, try the cheese by itself. Mm. And you can act with, those are apples in it. You There's can apple see the apple in, in it. it. Yeah. So then what I like to do is add a little caramel apple jam on top of all that and put it all together. Mm. Nice little appetizer. Ooh, cheese and sweet and salty. I'm excited to try this. this. You said this is your favorite? Yeah. I like caramel a lot. So again, take a nice apple jam, add a little something extra to it. A little sandwich with some cheese. Mm -hmm. A little more sweetness to it, a little smooth almost. Mm. Oh, it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's like candy. <laughs> it is. But with the cheese and the cracker, mm -hmm. you get a whole right. really <laughs> happy <laughs> explosion. That is delicious. Well, I'll try it with the cheese. Mm. Maybe I'll just know. Right. This is good by itself. Exactly. Wow. Thanks for pulling that one out. Yeah. <laughs> That is a party. You can really find an apple culture while traveling through Pennsylvania. Not only are multi-generational apple farmers continuing time-worn traditions, but they're also introducing a new generation of apples to the next generation of apple eaters. So if you're looking for a new twist on this tasty treat, it might be time to hit the road and see what Pennsylvania's apple growers are cooking up for you to try.